Hi, I'm Dave Mestry, the director of the Henry B. DuPont Planetarium at the Discovery Museum in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And today, we are going to turn you into an explorer. But first, you can call me Commander Dave. Now, we're going to actually learn a lot about the moon. It's our nearest neighbor in space. But more than just learning about the moon, we're going to learn how we are going to send people to the moon and explore the moon's surface. We're going to turn you into an astronaut. So get ready to explore. Oh, hey, you know, exploring the moon means that we're going to have to use some tools. Some of the tools that we use are here on the ground, tools like binoculars and, 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 and telescopes. Uh, these are tools that help us to look at the moon a little bit more carefully, to look at its features, uh, craters. In fact, the first observations that were made of the moon using these telescopes were done almost 400 years ago. And even since that time, we've been learning new things about the moon, even from a distance. So we're going to need to turn you into a really good moon observer. Maybe you have a pair of binoculars in your house, or maybe even better, you have a telescope. With these tools, we can start to really zoom in on the moon, and maybe we might find some new things. How about we can imagine what it's like to look at the moon up close with one of these telescopes or binoculars? Wow, it's great when you're using a telescope or a pair of binoculars. It, it makes the moon appear really, really big and it make it appear really, really close. That's really just an illusion. It's not really this close. It's almost 240,000 miles away. But even that far with our telescopes and binoculars, we can see lots of cool features. Like over here, you could see these bright white areas and then over here, you could see these dark plains. On the moon, we have two different types of terrain. We have the lunar lowlands, which are these dark lava plains right here. And then we've got the lunar highlands, rougher and bumpier, and more mountainous. Highlands and lowlands, those are the two main types of terrain that you'll find on the moon. You'll also find craters. Uh, these are caused by impacts. Space debris coming in at very high speeds, carving out these giant cavities and holes on the surface of the moon. Some of these craters are billions of years old. Now, we're gonna do an activity and turn you into a moon observer. We're gonna show you a close-up picture of the moon. We're going to scan the moon's surface, looking for all sorts of different types of details. But I've hidden some items on the moon, and I want to see if you can find them. Keep your eyes peeled for all the little hidden items that I've placed on the moon, and see if you can find them. Human race I wanna give it my 
country we began. That's really hard. It's a good thing we have our binoculars to help us see all of the moon and maybe find some of those critters. How many did you find? I know it was probably challenging looking at all of the surface features of the moon and I did hide those critters in there and I hid them really good. Let's try it again. Maybe if you missed a couple, you might find them the second time. human race. I want to give it my best shot. My goal to be an astronaut. Out in space and back again. The 21st century we begin. Welcome back. Good job looking at all those items that were on the moon. But you know, when you're looking at the moon, you know, sometimes the moon looks different. Its appearance changes every time you look at the moon from night to night. We say that those changes in the appearance are the phases of the moon. The phases of the moon. These phases of the moon happen because the moon is orbiting around the Earth and only half of the moon is actually ever lit up at any one time. And from here on Earth, it makes it look like the appearance of the moon is changing. We're gonna talk about the phases of the moon and we're gonna learn the names of each of those phases. And if you learn them once, you're good because the phases repeat in a cycle over and over again. Let's go to the phases of the moon.
In talking about the moon's phases, we really mean the appearance of the moon as you see it here on Earth uh, in the sky. Now, we're going to start with the first of our moon phases. Uh, that phase is called the new moon. It's the moon that you can't see. It doesn't mean that it's not in the sky. It is up there. It's just not visible. But wait a couple of nights and the first appearance of the moon will be a very faint crescent right after sunset. We call that a waxing crescent. Crescent for the shape of the moon and waxing because the moon appears to be getting larger and larger, or at least the part of the moon that we see, the lighted side of the moon, is starting to appear more and more. It's waxing. Now, after about a week of waxing crescent moons, at sunset, look towards the south in the sky, and you will see what moon amateurs like to call a half moon. It's not a half moon. We call this a first quarter moon, which will only happen on one night. Now, after the night of the first quarter moon, uh, you'll start to see more of the lighted side of the moon appear to you. And as that happens, we say the moon is waxing. Now, this shape is called a gibbous moon. And gibbous is what we call a humpback moon. That's what gibbous means, a humpback moon. And so the moon will continue to wax in a waxing gibbous moon for a week at a time until finally, after about a week, we will get our full moon. We're almost two weeks after the night of the new moon. Now, we only will get a full moon for one night. Now, after that night of the full moon, now the moon starts to change again and we are seeing the moon start to wane. And we will start with a, a waning gibbous moon. We're going to have a couple of nights of waning gibbous moons until finally, after about a week, we will see the moon appear to be a half moon again. But you know it's not a half moon. This special phase is called a last quarter moon. Now it only will appear on one night in our phase cycle. After that night, the moon continues to wane. And as it wanes, you'll start to see it appear more like a crescent. This is the time when we will see about a week's worth of waning crescent moons. Until finally, when you see the last of the waning crescents, there will be one night when the moon will not be visible in the sky. And we will call that night the new moon, the night of the new moon. And it turns out that this cycle repeats itself over and over again. In fact, you can get a calendar. And in this calendar, you can see that our phases will repeat over and over again every 29 days. That's how long our phase cycle will last. Now, you can actually make your own calendar of the moon's phases using Oreo cookies. That's right. You can use the Oreo cookies to make your own moon phases. Here's how it works. First, get yourself some Oreo cookies. You're going to need to open up those Oreo cookies and with the help of an adult, try to take off some of the cream filling so that it appears like the moon's phases. As you do that, make all the phases of the moon just like you see in our Oreo moon phase matching piece of paper that you can print for yourself. Once you've got that, try to match all of your Oreo cookie phases to all the phases of the moon. Here's our new moon, and there's a waxing crescent moon. Hey, check out the first quarter, and there's a waxing gibbous. And check out that full moon with all that cream, and there's a waning gibbous, and then finally our last quarter, and oh, there's our waning crescent right there, and 
the cycle repeats itself over and over again. And that's how you can make your own Oreo cookie moon phase matching game and calendar if you'd like using Oreo cookies. But make sure you get yourself a glass of milk when you're done. Hey guys, welcome back. And it's Commander Dave, and I've got a great storybook for you. It's called I Want to Be an Astronaut by Byron Barton. Here we go. I Want to Be an Astronaut by Byron Barton. I Want to Be an Astronaut. A member of a crew. And fly on the shuttle. Into outer space. I want to be up there. on a space mission. And have ready to eat meals. And sleep in zero gravity. I want to put on a spacesuit and walk around in space and help fix a satellite. and build a factory in orbit. I want to be up there a while. And then come back to Earth. I just want to be an astronaut. And visit outer space. The end. That was such a great book. I hope it inspired you to be an astronaut too. I know it did for me. All right, I think we are just about ready for our final ohms burn, and uh, we will be uh, docking with the uh, space station momentarily. Hey, Commander Dave. Yes. Did you hear about that brand new restaurant that they built on top of the moon? Um, no. Hmm. Food was great. No atmosphere. You know... That doesn't mean you can't have a little fun out in space. Oh, no, we can't. No, no. We could have a lot of fun with moon jokes. Hey. I bet you got one, too. I think I do, right here. All right, so here we go. How do you know when the moon is going broke? Hmm, I don't know. How do you know when the moon is going broke? When it's down to its last quarter. <laughs> oh, you're right. Hi. <laughs> But I got, a, I got a better one than that. Oh, do you? I may. Mm-hmm. Why do moon rocks taste better than earth rocks? <sighs> Why do moon rocks taste better than earth rocks? Because they're meteor. Uh, <laughs> I killed myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I've got one. Why does the moon orbit the earth? To get to the other side. <laughs> Eh, <laughs>
Ah, I'm a riot. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, why wasn't the moon hungry? Oh, I, I don't know. Because it was full. <laughs> That's a good one. Nothing gets past me. No, uh, no, you're, you're slick. <laughs> all right, I've got one. What do you get when you take green cheese and divide its circumference by its diameter? That sounds like a math problem. Mm -hmm. Aren't we doing science? Nope. What do you get when you divide the circumference of the blue cheese, or was it green? <laughs> by its diameter. <laughs> you might have to repeat that joke. I don't think our audience got that. It's a toughie. Okay, here we go. What do you get when you... Divide the circumference of green cheese by its diameter. I don't even know. <laughs> you get moon pie. Get it? That was really bad. <laughs> uh, Let's, Commander. Yeah. Uh, this button here seems to be stuck. I don't know what the problem is. Oh, oh I think we're getting a little too close to the space station. I think we're going to need to, oh, uh, yep, uh, space station, space station, we're, we're coming in a little, little too hot. We're going to try and do a, uh, orbiting maneuver to try. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. No need. I think I see the problem. It could be this. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Yep. Well, that killed about four minutes of this program. It did! <laughs> hey, welcome back. You know, sometimes the moon can actually surprise you. It turns out that NASA's LADEE mission discovered that there's actually water being emitted from the surface of the moon. Find out how NASA actually found out how impacts are releasing this water into space. From late 2013 to early 2014, a NASA mission called LADEE explored the moon's tenuous atmosphere and its dust environment. Now, LADEE's observations have led to a new discovery. The lunar surface is periodically releasing water. What we discovered is that the surface releases its water when uh, the moon is bombarded by micrometeoroids. This is especially noticeable during meteor showers. What we also found is that the surface that's releasing the water is being protected by a layer of few centimeters of dry soil that can only be breached by large micrometeoroids. When a micrometeoroids impact the surface of the moon, most of the material in the crater is vaporized. There is also a shock wave that propagates outward. That shock wave carries enough energy to release the water that's coating the grains of the soil. Most of that water will get released into space, and that's the signature that LADI detects with its instrument from its orbit. By analyzing the data returned by the neutral mass spectrometer, we found that the intensity and the frequencies of the fluctuations of signals from the water to be perfectly correlated with known meteor streams. For example, we were able to detect a big spike of water during the Geminid meteor shower that occurred in December of 2013. Thanks to LADEE, we now know that trace amounts of water are widely distributed across the lunar surface. This discovery provides a potential resource for future exploration, and it improves our understanding of the Moon's geologic past and its continued evolution. Hi, welcome back. Hey. Let's find out why the moon actually goes through phases. You're going to need a couple of simple items. You're going to need a small ball and a flashlight and just your eyes. We're going to find out how the moon goes through its phases. First, the moon has phases because one, the moon is shaped like a ball. Two, there's a light that shines on the moon. It comes from the sun, but it can only shine on half of the moon at any one time. And three, the moon orbits around us, the Earth. And as it does, we'll see different parts of that half-lit moon. I'll show you a video that I made that illustrates how the phases actually happen. 
I've got my ball here, and I've got my light source shining on it. And as I move around me, the camera, you start to see more and more of that illuminated side of the moon. And when the moon and me and the light source line up perfectly, I've got a full moon. But it won't last long as the moon keeps on moving. Hey, you probably know that's a gibbous phase, and, and here's a last quarter, and finally we end with a crescent. So get yourself a small ball and a flashlight, and you can make your own phases too. If you want to learn more about all the wonderful things that we do at Discovery Museum, check out discoverymuseum.org, www.discoverymuseum.org. Uh, we've got some learn at home science projects that you can work on. We really appreciate you watching. So keep exploring.